Greetings viewers, I am Eric the Car Guy, your host for today's ETCG1 video. We start things off here on ETCG1 with, hey, if it is your birthday, happy birthday, please enjoy this digital cake. Today's topic comes from the internet. Well, come to think about it, I guess I'm on the internet too, so you're stuck in this world. I read this article recently about a gentleman who had been car shamed. And uh, he got a letter from his HR department that said, you know, his 2005, I believe, Toyota Camry uh, with the faded paint and everything didn't exactly reflect uh, financial responsibility, is I think how it was worded. And I find this very comical, like very comical, because first of all, I think a 2005 Toyota Camry is an excellent choice for a reliable daily driving car, but that's just my opinion. And you know, I've kind of gone through life, uh, well, let's call it my adult life since I was a teenager or whatever, you know, not really knowing what it's like for those other people that are making car payments and such. Now, I did make car payments on my van and also my Honda Element back in the day, but there were, I guess you could say, reasons for that, like the van, uh, I financed that to, to get a house. But other than that, for the most part, I live with $200 cars, and let's just say that the HR department probably wouldn't even consider my application if they saw me driving up in this. But you and I both know that this car is perfectly mechanically sound, in fact the tires are great and everything, and, and I think that's the tell, like even if it's an old POS like this, I think if you look at the tires and you see good tires, that they're taking care of that vehicle, because I, I just, that's just been my experience, in fact cars would come into the shop back in the day and require an amount of work, let's say. If it had good tires on it, chances were good they were gonna buy the work. But if it didn't have good tires on it, or the tires were old, crusty, or whatever, it was likely they were gonna say, see it and go off and maybe find another vehicle or whatever. But the point of this video is to talk about car shaming. And first of all, you know, apparently it's a thing with, with certain people uh, that look at vehicles and, and I, I sort of subscribe to this. They see this as a reflection on uh, the person driving them. In fact, I've often said that people wear their vehicles like they wear their outerwear, like they wear their clothes. And I found this in many ways to be true, but there are people out there like me, like you perhaps, that might not subscribe to the I need the latest and greatest whatever, and I'm gonna perpetually make payments on into forever. You know, I realize some financial situations require, you know, that you've, you've got to do what you can to get what you need. But my channel, my philosophy, you know, stay dirty, that whole thing revolves around, you know, self-reliance and getting around this whole, you know, system that says that we have to, to look a certain way or be a certain way in order to be perceived, in order to perceive that we have value. And, you know, I think this goes on the other side of the spectrum also, those people with those really super flashy cars, you know, what are they trying to say? And, and I'm not saying, you know, that they're bad or whatever, because let's face it, I make my living off of shiny, flashy cars sometimes. So, you know, that we're all necessary. And I'm not trying to say here that one way is better than another, but the point of this is if you're gonna call somebody out because of the car that they're driving, you know, like I said, I think a 2005 Toyota Camry, faded paint or not, is an excellent choice for a daily driver because it's economical and most likely it's paid for, you know. To me, <laughs> that's the thing. So if, you're, if your 2005 Toyota Camry is paid for and <laughs> you're spending your money on other things, like maybe you're making great investments or something like that, I mean, how can that not be financially sound? And, and that's kind of where I'm coming from with this whole stay dirty thing. I'm trying to give you the tools or the knowledge that you might need in order to keep a $200 car going or buy a $200 car and make it work. And it saves you a ton of money that you can use for other things. In fact, the entire time that I was broke, that's what saved me, was not only driving POS cars like this that were reliable, but also working on other people's vehicles. So in essence, I made it work for me. <laughs> I made the junkie car work for me. And I'm not the only one. I know there are a lot of you out there like me that do this, that you don't subscribe to the, you know, I've got to go out to the dealership and buy myself a new something. Now, granted, there are situations where it's warranted. You know, maybe you aren't physically able to do your own repairs and you, you've, you've got to rely on something like that. I'm not faulting you for this. What I'm, what I'm calling out here is this idea that just because you're driving a junky car that you are not 
financially stable. <laughs> I think that's laughable. I really do. I think that's laughable. I think it's exactly the opposite. I think if you aren't going out spending beyond your means and you're taking care of the things you have, that is sound money. That's my, that's my opinion. But to say that, you know, just because you're driving around something old that might be a little beat up, that somehow you're not worthy, that somehow you, you can't take care of your finances. <laughs> it's just, seriously, some people. Anyway, that's my thought on this. I thought I'd put it back to you. I'll link this article down in the description that I'm referring to. Um, see if you find it as funny as I do. But, you know, I'm going to continue driving my $200 car as well as these other cars that are all black, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that show all the dirt and everything. It's just my way, I guess. But as you know, I, just every single one of these cars I didn't buy for the color. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there buy cars for colors. It's, that's cool. Anyway, um, I'm curious to see your opinions on this, like I said. Article link down in the description, other related videos, that type of thing. If you care about what's going on with my TL, all that kind of stuff, you're new to this thing, check it out. Links in the description to stuff, along with a link to ericthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you go if you have automotive questions for me. There's a whole bunch of resources there just for you. Aside from that, uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video with the world. Appreciate it when you do all that. Look forward to your comments on this one. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching, and yes, it is cold in the shop today, and I'm not going to run the heat so I can record an ETCG1 video. Have a nice day.